Hello and welcome to the 20th episode of Stay Nerdy, My Friends. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you guys about antimatter versus dark matter, and it's going to be really exciting. Um, antimatter is just the opposite of regular matter, as its name would suggest. Um, basically, for every single particle that exists that, as we know it, there is an antiparticle out there. Uh, it's their companions to each other, their partners, and but they don't touch. Well, they're not close to each other because if they touch, they annihilate each other. That, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, basically, um, let's take electrons. We know electrons as being very, very small, and they are negatively charged. The antimatter version of an electron is called an anti-electron, and it is still very, very small, but it's positively charged because it's the opposite. Um, and that's really cool because that, and it has been theorized that there could be whole galaxies out there, and they could be mirror images of the galaxies that we know way out there. So, and that they're just, the only difference is they're made out of antimatter, which would be really fascinating if that, if we could prove that, but we haven't proven that. So, eh. Um, so, particle physicists who uh, specialize in antimatter and theoretical physicists and whatnot, they like to play around with this idea that there are mirror images of our galaxies out there, like I just said, and that's, that, that's really cool, but if you were ever to meet your antimatter twin, I would highly suggest not high-fiving them, because as I said, when regular particles and antiparticles uh, come in contact with each other, they completely annihilate one another, and this is sort of like the Hawking radiation that I told you about. Uh, the two particles come into existence, and then they touch, and then they go out and back out of existence. Um, when your matter touches your antimatter twin's hand, the two of you will annihilate each other because of just because that's just how it works. Um, <laughs> However, for those of you who are wondering, that does not uh, complete. That does not uh, violate the law of the conservation of energy, because when you and your antimatter twin uh, annihilate each other, there will be a huge release of light, exactly equal to the amount of energy contained within you and your twin. So it does not violate the law of con the con of conservation of energy. Um, so that's what antimatter is. Dark matter, on the other hand is a much more vague subject. Um, dark matter is just basically a general term that we use for anything that we can't see, and that can include everything from particles and matter that is inside of black holes, which we obviously can't see because nothing can escape from black holes, generally. Um, that can also mean stars that are just not bright enough for us to see from here. Um, it can really mean a lot of different things. It can also mean exotic particles, which antimatter are exotic particles, but I'll get to why dark energy, dark matter is almost definitely not antimatter. We'll get to that at the end. Um, so, dark energy is really important because if you look at galaxies and how they work, you can't, the spiral in a galaxy is, well, in a spiral galaxy, is directly proportional to the amount of mass contained within it. And if you look at the gal at the at our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, the spiral is not correct. Uh, the spiral itself would suggest that we have about ten times more matter inside of our galaxy than we can actually see. And that's where dark matter comes in, because if it wasn't for dark matter, our galaxy wouldn't make any sense. Um, so, and a, a lot, all, all of the galaxies are like that. It's it's not always ten times the amount of uh, matter. It, so, you know, we know that it's not just the equation that's screwed up. We know that there has to be something more out there. Um, so, the reason we know that dark matter is almost definitely not antimatter is because, once again, when antimatter comes in contact with regular matter, it annihilates itself. And there is a release of light because of that, because that's the energy being released. And if we could see light leaving these uh, different matter meaning antimatter particles, um, we would be able to see them, and it would thus negate the whole dark matter thing. Um, so that's why we know that antimatter and dark matter are almost definitely not the same thing. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure. So if your friend is ever talking about dark matter, but he's saying that it's antimatter. Now you know how to correct them. Um, 
Also, TV shows do that a lot. Like, I was just watching a TV show, I don't remember what it was called, but they were talking about antimatter, and they were calling it dark matter, and it just pissed me off. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Stay Nerdy, my friends. We're only about eight subscribers away from meeting our goal of 50 subscribers in March, so... Share this video with your friends. Get them to subscribe to the channel. It's a pretty interesting channel. Um, this is my second episode that I've made today because I had to make five episodes this week. Um, next week we'll be back on our regular schedule, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, so yeah, that'll be pretty cool. Um, like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and as always, stay nerdy, my friends.